There we go. So, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna kind of talk about is like business plans and why you might want a business plan or need a business plan. Um, startups in the US are two and a half times more likely to go into business if they have a written plan. Um, so, and basically that's because it forces you to think through all aspects of your, your business that you're thinking about or your nonprofit. Um, it highlights any potential problems that you might see coming down the pipeline because once you kind of flesh out your idea and you start thinking through it, then you can kind of see like what may happen down the line. Um, you'll be prepared for anything. It will help you explain your concept. So basically, you know, part of the business plan is going to be that executive summary and that's your 60 second elevator pitch, right? That's your like, I know exactly what I'm doing. This is why we do it. Um, pitch for any time you're telling someone about your business, which everybody here did really great. Um, and then there's plenty of help and library resources to help you along the way. So um, as you're planning for your business, whether it's you know growing your business and marketing, we have so many resources that people just don't know about. A lot of them are digital. Um, and you can access them from home. You don't even have to come into the library. Um, it doesn't hurt my feelings if I don't see you for a really long time. Um, I'm just excited to get these resources in your hands. It hurts my feelings. It, does <laughs> <laughs> uh, it hurts my feelings when I don't get to see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so one of the first things I want to kind of walk through is navigating library websites. It's one of the things I always like to talk about because a lot of times people go to a library website and we are notoriously super terrible um, at having websites. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're really good at information and putting a lot of it out there, but not very good at like displaying it in a way that makes you uh, your user experience, very wonderful. Um, so when you are, <laughs> so when you are navigating a library website, so I'm going to use ours as an example. So we have Kirkwood Public Library. Some of the keywords that you want to look for are like research, research it, digital resources, um, databases. The great thing about libraries is every library uses a different term too. So not all libraries are using the same terms to describe what it is you're looking for. Um, so on our website, you'll see over here, it's research it. Um, and you can click on that. And this is where you're gonna find all of these digital resources. And you'll see right here at the top, you can see our business resources that we have. Um, if you go to the county website, it's research. If you go to the city's website, it's digital resources. Um, so, kind of some different things to look out for there. Um, if you are, and how many people here have a library card? Assuming it's not expired. Mine's expired right now. Okay. I don't know anyway, but I do have one. Oh, shrug. <laughs> shrug. Do they expire? Um, they do expire. Um, so everybody does it a little differently. County will auto renew your library card as long as like, your address matches the NCOA, like whatever. Um, ours are good for two years and we'll renew it on the phone if nothing has changed. If you have moved, you have to come in and like show us. And your, I'll probably write on that two years. Yeah, and then the city is every year on your birthday and you have to go in. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I always, I mean, it's great. The library is like right down the street from my house, but I always forget. And then I'm like trying to do something. I'm like, oh, my birthday passed. <laughs> uh, How did you forget? Then my library card. Is, I was oh, saying. I was like, my library card is Not that my birthday. <laughs> that too. Um, so um, yeah, but you, every library card, for every system has something different to offer, which is kind of cool. Um, and that's one of the really nice things about St. Louis is that you can get, we have a reciprocal with all of the different libraries. So um, you can get a city card, you can get a St. Charles card, you can get a county card, you can get a Kirkwood card um, and use all of the different resources. Um, if you are writing a business plan, I always like to show people the Kaufman Fast Track. 
No, that didn't come up. Um, which is a really great free tool put out by the Kaufman Foundation. Um, they also have, um, they also have like business ideation tools in this, in this um, kind of, I guess, module, um, but it's free. The Kaufman Foundation is based out of Kansas City. They do a lot of their sole goal is like helping small businesses and entrepreneurs um, put together successful businesses. So they actually, it's another, the Kauffman Foundation is a great place to look for grants if you're looking for grants for your business or for your um, region or whatever. Um, and they, they are, you know, they do give grants to small businesses um, or chambers or all of that good stuff. Um, so Is they're called Fast Track by the Kaufman Foundation. Mm -hmm. And it's F, and I'll send these slides out too, and it'll oh. have all the links. Um, but it's Fast Track with a C, no K. Okay. Um, and <laughs> so they have a business plan tool, and it's really kind of neat because they walk you through all of these questions. They'll ask you, um, you know, what are you doing at what stage are you in they kind of walk you through exactly everything it is business for dummies right so <laughs> um so they walk you through you can save each section and then you can actually preview it and then download it and take it off to whoever wanted to see your business plan it's also nice that it's all online and in the cloud because you can update it as you go so as you grow and you need to make changes you can do that all in here um same with oops the ideation so they have the business model canvas so you can go in there and it's just plug and play, you can just type in and type your different ideas down and keep them saved in here. And then the last thing with business plans, um, we do have um, mock-up business plans. So um, here at Kirkwood Public Library, I have some books set out that have like examples of business plans in them, but St. Louis County Library, Ferguson Public Library, and um, St. Charles Library all have access to something called Gale Business Entrepreneurship. And it is a online digital tool where they have lots of online business plans you can look at. And I tried to pull it up. And as with all technology, sometimes databases are down. Um, and this one was down right now. <laughs> so I couldn't access it. Um, but it's kind of cool to see what successful business plans have looked like in the past. And that's kind of what this screen is. So you can put in a, a tool a keyword. So like baking, if you were to run a baking company, and then it'll pull up different baking business plans that successfully worked. So there were actual examples. Yeah. Real oh, yeah. Really they change like the name, like, um, and I always tell people to like, and they're older usually um, by a few years. So I'm always like, you know, please don't plagiarize and just like take things from here because sometimes the financials may not be at, like still up to date and things like that. Um, so. If Circuit City is one of your vendors. <laughs> right, right. I don't think they're that old. <laughs> um, okay. So what goes in a business plan when you're planning? So the first part is your um, overview or your executive summary. Um, this is where you get to describe your passion project and why you want to do it. This is your 60 second elevator pitch of what you're doing, that kind of thing. Um, then we're going to move into the business description of the product or service plan. So this is where you describe your product and services and how it benefits your customer. You're going to talk about um, the different features of the products that you're providing. Um, and then in this section, you'll also include any plans for protecting your intellectual property or government approvals or things like that. And this is where Kirkwood um, has some really cool tools that not all of the other libraries have. St. Charles is one of the only other libraries that has um, a tool called Legal GPS. And it is a, so I'm gonna pull it up. So 
And from our website, you'll see here, you can click on legal GPS. Oh, and Or I don't remember my login and password. Oh, bummer. Okay. So <laughs> legal GPS is, I'm not going to make you watch me try to log in, but legal GPS is a cool tool because it basically walks you through different legal scenarios that your business might run into. Um, and kind of gives you things to watch out for legally. Like, okay, if you are doing X and Y, do you need an NDA? And then if they um, like suggest something like an NDA to you, they actually give you um, a template for an NDA that you can download after you kind of walk through it. Um, it starts out very basic. It starts out with, you know, have you registered your business? And then walks you through some of those. Like, do you want to be a um, an LLC? Do you want to be an S Corp? Like all of those different things. Um, so it's really cool from that sense. And the guy who started it um, is actually from St. Louis um, and he's a lawyer <laughs> and he started it because he was working in co-working spaces and um, people would come up to him and be like, oh, hey, um, I just have a really quick like legal question because you know, startups don't want to spend a lot of money. And so he was like, hey, what if I had a tool that I could sell to like co-working spaces and libraries where people could use it for free while they were there that would answer some of these very basic legal questions for them. And so he created Legal GPS. And so we have it, St. Charles has it. So if you have a St. Charles card, um, you have access to it. Um, and is it's it a, something that you're reading through or is it like questionnaire style? It's game. It's actually gamified. So it's even cooler. Um, <laughs> so um, it kind of walks you through um, different sections and you can't like move on to the next section until you finish, you unlock the next section. Um, so, you know, you can kind of fly through it if you've already registered your business. Um, and then get to more of like the meat and potatoes of like, are you hiring people like that kind of thing. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty awesome tool that we're really excited to have here. Um, and you can, you know, go from the Kirkwood website and fill out um, and register from there. We also just got access to something called Law Depot. Um, and this is available on either on our website like this or um, on the Libby app, which um, if some of you aren't familiar with the Libby app, the Libby app is a way to like read digital eBooks and audiobooks and things like that for free at the library, but they've really expanded it. And now they're doing like, you can see that we also have courses of it, like learning courses available through that app too. And now they have the magazines are all available through that app. So they've really started to expand um, what they're offering. But Law Depot kind of works hand in hand with Legal GPS. Uh, I would say Legal GPS is where you go if you're not sure what law things you need and legal things that you need. And then Law Depot is um, where you go if you kind of know what you're looking for. And Law Depot has more than just small business, but you can see down here, you know, it kind of gives you a walkthrough of different things you might want to do. So start a business is down here, sell services. Um, and then you can see they have different. Lend money is on here. <laughs> so we can click on lend money. And then you can choose your. And then it kind of walks you through the different documents. Huh. Yeah, so they're kind of um, pretty cool 
Legal GPS will help you know which documents you need. And then you can go into Law Depot and say, okay, now I know which documents I need and walk through and set those documents up. Um, St. Louis County also has a tool. Um, was I able to pull it up? Oh. Um, Is there a point where it says, hey, you should probably talk a little bit about this? <laughs> so the general, yeah, I think that the general thing is like, they walk you through like, here is what you need. And then you can either, you know, use these documents or, but they are, I think they have warnings all over them that like, these are not, you know, Fair these are templates, yeah. right? These are templates that you can use for guidance, but. Um, but it's know. not connecting you to like a specific no, it will never do that. Yeah. Um, none of the databases will ever like recommend a lawyer or like try to link to. But does it tell you like you need a this kind of lawyer? I don't think so. I don't. That's the question I have. So yeah, like what type, type of lawyer? Of lawyer? Who I... answer this question? Another lawyer who doesn't specialize in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This type of lawyer. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's what I would, I would probably just call someone that I think might be it. And then they would say, no, you need to talk to X, Y, Z. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, so all of these documents are templates and things to go off of. Um, and you can use them as is, but there is no, yeah, I, I always say, you know, if you have a lawyer friend, just have them kind of glance at it and be like, yeah, that's good. Because <laughs> sometimes you don't need all the bells and whistles, but sometimes you do. Yeah. Um, St. Louis County also has um, Yale legal forms. Um, St. Louis Public has this too, and so does St. Charles. Um, Yale legal forms, all the Yale sites are not really coming up right now. Um, but Yale legal forms is, as it sounds, it's a database of legal forms, templates, um, so again, it's not just small business. There's all kinds of things in there, um, but you can so it's like a download. Legal alternative to legal system. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I tell people because a lot of people pay for that stuff, right. and I'm like, stop paying for it. You get it for free with your library card. Like, there's no reason to pay Legal Zoom for that document. Um, okay. One of the things we're going to talk about. Um, in the next section is your marketing analysis and plan. Um, so we have, we have so many tools for that, that it's going to just be crazy. So I always kind of put that in a separate section. Um, but this is where you're talking, you know, about who is your market, what are their needs, what do they want to buy, where are they buying it, all of that kind of thing. Um, and then you have the management and organization. So this is where you describe who you are and why you're better than everybody else. Um, I assume this is where um, Mike excels. <laughs> <laughs> but it is where you want to kind of, it's basically like your resume section of your business plan. It's where you're saying, this is why I'm the perfect match for this small business because I have blah, blah, blah years of experience and I do this, and blah, blah. Um, and then there's the financial uh part of the plan so this is where you're going to calculate your startup costs um and there are some pretty cool tools out there so one is this sba startup um i printed off some examples in the back if you want them but actually the online tool is pretty cool because you can actually replace um these numbers and say okay my security deposit was 500 you know, my first month's rent was 2000 and you can change, you can even change these. To be, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but you can change these things to, you can change that. And then it'll actually update here at the bottom. So let's see. So you'll see oh, that you. uh, it'll actually update your total cost at the bottom. Yeah, so there you go. 
It'll actually update your cost as you go. So this is a really great tool for kind of putting together a budget that shows your fixed costs and your monthly costs. Um, and it's just something very simple that the SBA puts out. Um, that's a really great place to start with budgeting. So here's where we get to the marketing and libraries have so much data um, that we have access to, it's insane. So when you're talking about your industry and you wanna know if the market is growing or not, um, or you wanna find out what others are doing in the market, um, we have access to industry reports, market rankings, um, SWOT analyses of different companies. So one tool that we have here at Kirkwood that no one else has, um, ha -ha, <laughs> is called Statista. Um, and it's a really great, it's just what it sounds like. It's a statistics database, um, but it has a lot of industry reports and um, projections, outlooks on where different markets are going. Um, and so you can see I pulled up cosmetics and personal care and you can see, you know, it's showing what it's a $500 billion industry. Um, and then you can see that there are different industry insights. It's also global data. So if you were going to expand your business and dominate worldwide um, yarn, Absolutely. <laughs> global um, domination. Um, you yeah. can actually look in here and see, okay, what is that doing in this country? Um, and then uh, through our website. So, so we have to like be in here. You do not. Okay, so so uh, yeah, so everything so far that I've talked about is accessible from anywhere. You don't have to be in the building. Um, so we have in, in library access is this link. Um, if you are logging in from home, I'll show this really quick. You go to my account and you log in. I know. I have, I have three of my library cards memorized. I don't have my St. Charles one memorized. Um, and then I'm not ashamed for you to see what I've been checking out. Um, and then down here under research databases from home, that's where you'll find Statista. And so you would click on that link and you would open up um, Statista. From home. Where did Statista? So even though I don't live in Kirkwood, I can still get a Kirkwood yep. library card. Absolutely. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, so we have reciprocal programs with everybody. Can you um, do it online or do I have to do it here? You do, you do have to do it here. We, you can get one after the okay. program's over. As long as you have an ID with you, they'll be able to set you up. Um, but yeah, so the other thing you can kind of see in our projections. So what are they projecting it to look like? Past performance. Um, you know, what's the largest share of that market? So, you know, you're putting together some products in an industry, but you want to know like what products are doing the best in that market. So you kind of know what to put your money into. Um, you can see different trends as well. So what's trending, all natural products and the cosmetics, and then who are the industry leaders? And of course, US dominates the market, haha. -ha. Um, <laughs> um, but then you can see what the state of the industry is in other countries. They have reports that you can download and take with you. You can um, use any of the images, the statistics um, that they have and put them in presentations. There is no limit to what you can download. There's no limit to how you can use it as long as you are not reselling it. So you can't resell their images and their data, but you can use them in presentations. I even asked them like, what if somebody gave a presentation and it was on TV or whatever? And they were like, yep, they can use it. Um, so yes. So that is Statista. Um, another resource that County has is called First Research. Um, this is actually, it's, I 
typed in consulting services. So you can pull up what the industry um, report is for um, all kinds of different uh, industries, but this, it's usually a little higher level with Statista, you can drill down a little further into different things. Um, but if you were just looking for a higher level, look, one of the things I do like they do in here is they give it an industry growth rating. So they'll say whether it's a high growth market, a medium growth market or a low growth market. And I always tell people, if you're looking at something and it says low growth, that doesn't mean no growth or it's a dying industry. It just means that it might be more competitive. There may be something going on right now that's making it low demand. And you might have to just work a little harder, faster, stronger, smarter um, than your competitors. Um, and I have on the presentation links to the different resources that I talk about. Um, so you'll be able to click on those when I send out the slides. For com competitors, if you are looking for what your competition is doing, who they are, how many are in um, an area, there are a couple of tools. You can look in Statista as well, but that, those are going to be your larger companies that are going to be your competition. Um, St. Louis County and St. Louis Public and St. Charles all have a tool called Reference USA or Reference Solutions now is what they've changed the name to. Um, and it is a tool where you can do things like look up competitors and you can see where they are on a heat map. So So you can search by a keyword, so we'll say iron store. Paste not open black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll say yarn retail. And then we can go to um, you can choose anything from a radius to a zip code to a metro area. Um, so we'll choose metro area for now. And then you can select this is nationwide data. Um, so if you, you know, we're hoping to expand into Illinois or Arkansas or somewhere else, you know, we do have nationwide data and you can look at that. Um, and then we can update the count. We can see that there's 11 yarn retail in the metro area. And you can look at the results and see who they are. Many of them are Joanne. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there are some really great names in here. Um, and then, oh, it is? Yeah, it's been closed for like a year. Oh. So, and then you can look at them on a heat map. And so to Heather's point, you know, these databases are only updated, they're updated every day, but not every record is updated every day because there's millions of records. Um, so you could see on a heat map, you know, where they're located. And if there were a lot, um, it would show you this green to red. So you would see like red splotches where there were more. How is it getting all this data? Is this all publicly reported or scraping it? No, so a little bit of everything. Um, so they, this company That's in particular, yeah, this company in particular has a call center in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, where they do nothing but like call businesses all day and every day. So some of it is public. So, you know, if they report public earnings yeah. and things like that, some of it is estimates based on where they are located, what type of business they have, um, that kind of thing. Some of it is self-reported. So when they call the business, whenever you get a, your business gets a call and they're like, we want to verify this information and you hang up on them, um, it's usually this company putting it into this database. Um, wow. So do with that what you will. But some people stay on the phone with them and give them that information. Um, and they pull the companies from phone books and online searches and um, registration, you know, registration with the state. And they do drive by, like when people go on vacation, they're like, hey, can you see if this place is still open? 
Like you're going to be in this town, go down the street and see which of these businesses are still there. Um, so it, it, they have a massive way of like putting together all of this data. It's not just one thing. Um, and it's truly impressive. But if you click on any of these businesses, you can also see some of that information. And you can see that the last time they updated it was September, 2021. So that means I'm very curious if it is closed, um, if they did talk to someone there that said that they were still open. I doubt that they would have because, the, I mean, they, uh, they were actually, the owner was getting ready to retire and then there was talks that someone was gonna buy it and take it over and then COVID hit and then the deals fell through. There were like, I, I don't know. The rumors were like there were two or three deals on the table, but yeah. like somebody was looking at it. It unraveled. But it did. Uh, it, it does show <laughs> sales volume there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I like that. <laughs> very quick and impressive. <laughs> you can also see in here. Um, estimated expenditures too. So when you're thinking about like what your expenditures might be, and I will say that um, when talking to the company that puts this all together, they have even said that these expenditures are pretty spot on and the IRS actually goes in here and looks and uses that as an indicator. And if you are, if you are, yep, an outlier, they use this database to come for you. <laughs> so. <laughs> You've just you've just created more competition for yourself. <laughs> you know what? I'm not worried about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the other thing that we have data on is um, market analysis. So, what does this market look like? What does St. Louis market look like? Who? What is the future growth there? Um, how much product? You know is their demand for that kind of thing. Um, and one of the biggest resources for that is available um, at St. Louis Public and County and St. Charles, the bigger, the bigger systems have it. Um, and it is called Demographics Now. Um, and, and it is a Gale product. And I'm so sad because this is my, one of my favorite resources. Um, so like I said earlier, the Gale products were not working and this is a Gale product. Um, and so it looks like it's not working. Um, so I'm going to have to skip that part, <laughs> but if you want to sit down with me and go over demographics now, um, one-on-one, -on -one, it is just a phenomenal tool. Um, it will show you, you can actually create maps and, and kind of filter and say, okay, where are people paying more for mortgages? And then you can kind of see on a map where in St. Louis are people paying more for mortgages and then target those people. Um, you can pull market demand. So where is there more demand for yarn? And then you can see where there is more demand for that. Yeah, which market is underserved? Right. Uh, right. So right. Yeah, and you can even pull a map that will show you not only the demand, but then where the competition also is. So you can see, balance. yep. So you can see where is their demand and then where is there a hole in your competition? I would definitely think about <laughs> um, it is like the wow tool that everybody goes, oh yeah, very cool. This white screen here? Yep, this white screen here. <laughs> it was really the, impressive. The gateway <laughs> timeout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so bummer. Let me see if actually sometimes because I have more than one card, I just try to see if it's only down at county. 
or if it's also down everywhere. So that's the nice thing about having more than one card too, is if one library is having an issue like with their connection, but it kind of looks like this is just everywhere. Um, sometimes it is just that library having the problem. Um, and if you have more than one card, you can just go to the other library that has that same tool, but it looks like this is a bummer. Actually, we had several different systems that had server access So I wonder if there's like a national oh. thing. Maybe. Yes. Um, okay. And then we don't really have anything for like pricing strategy and pricing policy and price lists. I've had a lot of people ask like, oh, do any of these tools show like what my competitors are pricing their products at? The answer is no. Um, the only way to do that is like some good old fashioned competitive, you know, research and calling around and seeing like what things cost or whatever. Um, and then when you're talking about market penetration, like how will you distribute the product? Do you need partners to do that? Um, I once worked with a gaming company who needed somebody to actually create their game, board game. So they had the idea, they had their um, mock-up, um, but they needed someone who could produce it. And so they came in and they used, again, Reference USA is not just for looking up competitors. You can look up people that you want to work with or people that you want to call on um, as far as like other business. So if you're in a business to business, you can use this tool to pull a list of businesses that you want to call on. Um, And also you can use this tool and another one called Mergent Intellect, which might work. So we might show that one to pull consumer lists. So if you have a product that you are selling directly to consumers, you can actually pull a direct mail list with your library card and not pay for the list portion of it. Yeah, save some money mm -hmm. and then mail directly to people. And this is the creepy part because <laughs> the first thing everyone does when they get home is they go in and they look themselves up <laughs> and see what information is on them. Um, but you can choose a location and I always try to not choose St. Louis. I usually choose. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so we're going to go with Albuquerque. Um, but then there's all these different lifestyles that you can choose from. Interest in selling and bidding. Yep. Um, okay, so if I'm a real estate agent and I'm trying to mm -hmm. figure out who might be likely to sell their home next, how would we arrive at that? Who would be likely to sell their home next? Somebody who's so, close to retirement. So, yeah. Um, so interested in weddings because they're not getting married or mm -hmm. babies or about to retire. So I guess life changes. Yeah. So there isn't like a life changes one um, <laughs> or and or a wedding one. Um, so the only wedding data we have is in Statista. Um, but yeah, so for pulling, but yeah, they have like interest in children's. Concoct a formula that says, okay, well, this list is too many. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, I don't know if it's in this one. In Reference USA, you can pull, oh, I see I have a chat, home improvements. There you go. There yes. Yeah, so if they're gonna be putting money into their home. Um, in, oh no, it is in here. So length of residence. So you could do, um, you know, I don't know. I if they yeah, so the, you can do a mailing list to renters too. So that would only go to people who rent. So if huh. they're looking, um, one of the things we talk about is uh, pulling a list of renters who make a certain estimated income. And you're like, you know, hey, if you're paying that much. Can I have that now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can also do net worth and estimated income and kind of put those together and then pull renters and say, okay, you make 
more money, maybe now is the time to invest in a home. Um, and then you can do that again, you can do that by MSA, you can do that by um, zip code, you can do it by a radius, um, whatever you want. The nice thing about it is, <laughs> Maybe you could cross reference this data, like pull the statistics, some of the market trends, and then cross reference it with some of the, the data that you have here. Exactly. And project what they might do in the next 12 months based off of the historical data and the current data. Exactly. And you can believe it on a radical with this. Yep. And with demographics now, too, with showing like where your um, where the demand is and where people are paying more mortgages and things like that. Um, yeah, you can target in there and then come in here and say, well, I know it's these zip codes that I want um, and just pull them. So if you'll say- have like a kind of a complicated multi-tool query like that, uh -huh. we like book time with you and yes. help us walk through all the, okay. Absolutely. So there's no way to take that. No, and I tell people like, go in and play around with it. But when you get lost and confused, call me and we'll sit down Do and we'll go through- questions to ask. Exactly. Um, and then we can pull a list and this one has 120 people on it. And there's your list of those renters. What was who, the chart at the top of the um, So this is going to show you where, where in that area they are. So these are all, I guess, Albuquerque suburbs. I don't know. I don't know Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> it actually most of the time it's big the big chunk is the blue of like St. Louis yeah. and then it has yeah a lot of smaller ones um but the, yeah then you can download this list you can add in different things that you want to see so if you want to compare the list you pulled with things like okay are they pet owners that kind of thing you can check those boxes and then you build the files and then you get an Excel spreadsheet with that list of people and everything that you checked on it. Wow. And that's what you can either upload into you your own systems. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I always tell people is there are phone numbers in here. Um, they are not scrubbed for the do not call list. Yeah, that, that was the next question. So CCPA. Yeah, so, so, be, so it, direct mail is fine, but like the phone numbers are not scrubbed. Um, I know there are some industries like real estate where they have their own. I've had real estate agents be like, no problem. My system scrubs it like when I upload the list. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> so I know that that exists. Um, sure. Yeah. Me too. What about IP addresses? Nope. We don't have anything like that. Yeah. We don't have email addresses either. Um, in, in reference solutions, they'll trick you and it'll be like, you know, on a list of 5,000, there's, you know, 1,000 emails. And then you click on the 1,000 emails and then it's like, you can buy this email list. Um, and then I usually get up on a soapbox about not buying email lists. Um, but we can save that for another time. <laughs> Not only that, but like if they don't use that email address anymore, and like there's just well the. The biggest thing is that you're buying a list of people who are not your customers, right? right? So then you send them an email and it's it's okay to buy an email list if it's something like, oh, I'm gonna have a grand opening and I wanna send it to like the people right in the area because I think they'd be interested or something like that and do it one time, but don't continue to use that list because what happens is they're not your customers. They market as spam. They're like, I didn't sign up for this. They market as spam. And then once enough people market as spam, then it starts to show go to someone Maybe I want your emails, but Gmail is now saying too many people have called this spam and now they're throwing it in my spam folder and I'm not seeing your emails anymore. Yeah. So a lot of companies out there that will sell you an email list, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, another tool that is really great. Um, so you put your direct mail list together. You know, you've done that for free with your library card. I always like to show Canva. Um, it is a free tool for creating, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for creating um, postcards, flyers, all different kinds of things that you might want to mail off or send to people. Um, 
and it is also free. Yay. Um, so the last part um, when you're planning for your business are the financials, right? Um, so we talked about the SBA worksheet for budgeting, um, but there's also some really great tools for doing cash projections. Um, so Kaufman, again, oh, I already closed it, but they had the business model plan. They had the, um, they have pitch decks, but they also have a financial section and you can download um, a bunch of Excel spreadsheets and plug in numbers and play to do your cash projection. So if you are in a sales-based industry and you need to kind of know um, what your sales pipeline looks like and things like that, it's a really great free tool that's out there. Um, and then, you know, when you're working on your projections of where you think your business might go over the next five years, that's when you can go into a Statista or a first research and look at their outlooks at what they are projecting that do. So we'll go into beauty and personal care. And then you can see like, what are they projecting over, you know, until 2026, what are their projections? And so if you are projecting that your company will do X, um, but they're saying, you know, you're gonna have a dip, <laughs> Um, and it's not necessarily going to go up by that much, you can pay attention to that. And they even give little analyst opinions. So it's a pretty cool tool. And then they break, like this particular one is broken off by offline versus online. So you can see how those compare for your particular industry. Um, and then even like which online channels um, might be the best. Amazon sells the most cosmetics. <laughs> Basics, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, also, different sources of financing. How are you going to finance? So we have a tool here called Foundation Grants um, Online or whatever they call it now. Um, and it is a resource that is only available at the library. Um, luckily, it is available at four, four of the libraries in the St. Louis area. So it's available here. It's available at St. Louis County Library at Headquarters downtown at St. Louis Public at their headquarters, and then at St. Charles, I think at their Spencer Road location. Um, but you do have to come into the library and use it. Um, it's really great for nonprofits um, for finding grants. Um, the flip side to that is they have a grants for individuals resource as well, and that's where you're going to find more things that might be aimed at businesses. Um, so it is a grant basically a money finding tool. Um, it's a database you can go in and search and sort by different um, items and then see who is giving those grants to people um, like you're, who you're trying to reach um, and also how much they're giving so that you know how much to ask for. So it'll even tell you like historically they give $5,000 to $20,000 grants. So if you're looking for a $100,000 grant, that person's not a match. Let's look at somebody else. Um, what it, basis do you typically see them getting grants up for? Is it targeting minority owned businesses as well as revenue? Or is it kind of all over the place? It, I mean, it depends, right? Um, it, I think it depends on A, who you're serving. So if you are going to do educational programs and things like that, um, you can get program grants to do that type of. Um, programming essentially that might reach then lower like you know if you were going to do mortgage workshops or whatever and you were going to target lower income you could probably get some grants to put those programs together um so it just depends on what you're looking for and what's in there um but a lot of times you'll sort by who you're targeting um versus what you're doing so it's not about who I am, it's about who I'm serving. Can be. It can be about who you are as well. I mean, they, there's grants in there for both things. Um, 
And then there's another tool called Grant Select that's available at St. Louis County Library. Um, it's a little clunkier, it's not as swanky, um, but you can access it from anywhere. Um, but you can't save searches or do any of the stuff that you can do in foundation. So it's a good one to like look at from home and see what's available and then come into the library and do a deeper dive into um, the foundation tool and see what's going on. There's also the SBA lender match program. So if you're looking for a loan, Small Business Administration has a lender match program where they match you with people who are lending to small businesses um, based on like what your needs are as a small business. Um, there's also this Missouri SourceLink website. Um, Missouri SourceLink is a really great resource for finding um, anything in Missouri that has to do with small business but they have a resource navigator tool where you can actually sort by your area of assistance. So you can say financial resources and assistance and filter, and it's gonna show you who in Missouri is giving money. So you're gonna find different capital, venture capitalists in here um, and be able to kind of click to their websites and see the different programs that are giving money to small businesses. So that list is a combination of banks financing investors with money to deploy mm -hmm. grants as well. Or that's only yeah, so Arch Grants is listed in here. So there are grants listed in here as well. Yeah, this is um, this resource navigator. They put a lot of work into this. Um, it, is, it is a really great resource um, that we have available in the state of Missouri. Um, and then I create a link uh, as well of free resources for entrepreneurs. So I put together a list of free things that are out there um, to help you as you're starting out, um, to help you with research, to help you with legal questions, um, things like that. And I try to keep this as updated as I can, um, but that link is on there for you as well, along with the different digital library resources available around and which libraries provide it. That's super helpful. Yeah. Um, other business library resources as you're starting out. So St. Louis Public Library downtown has a patent and trademark resource center. So if you are doing something that needs like patent, trademarks, um, that kind of thing, that is the place to go. If you are inventing something or creating something new, um, the librarian down there, her name is Eleanor. She's wonderful, um, but it is the only one in the area, the Patent and Trademark Resource Center. Um, actually, the librarian who used to be there and run that actually went to work for the PTRC like in DC. Um, so they poached her. She was so great um, and took her to DC and she actually works for the government at the Patents and Trademark um, Center. Um, so, but it's a really it's wonderful- a soft spot for heart for patents coming out of St. Louis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's making the decision. I don't think she's stamping me like approval. <laughs> um, but so if you have questions about doing searches and trying to figure out who has a trademark on something or a patent on something that you're creating. That is the place to go. Um, I already talked about foundation directory access at the four different. Um, so if you can't come here, you can go to one of those other three locations to access the grants databases. Um, and then we here at Kirkwood Library and other libraries have some of these as well, but we have a more robust um, list of items that you can check out um, that are not book related. So things like Wi-Fi hotspots. Every library has Wi-Fi hotspots. So if you're going on vacation, um, you can check out a Wi-Fi hotspot. If you are going you know, somewhere you don't think you might have very good internet or you want to have a little faster internet while you're on vacation, um, you're going to the beach, you want to ha have your laptop down at the ocean. I don't know why, but maybe that's jam. Um, <laughs> you can get a Wi-Fi hotspot and take that with you. I will say you still have to be able to have service to use a Wi-Fi hotspot because I was so excited and I was like, yes, we're going floating. I'm going to have my Wi-Fi hotspot. 
and then had no cell service and couldn't use my Wi-Fi hotspot because. Did you open the cooler to let them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it did not work. Um, um, so. Tents. Explain the tents. Yeah. So we here we have pop-up tents. So if you um, are going to do an event and you haven't bought a tent yet, like tent. Um, yeah, like a canopy oh, tent. Can. Yeah, you can check that out with your library card. Um, and then return, and then return it to us. Um, we also have um, a printer and a scanner. Um, so, and that is right now, I think only for nonprofits, but I'm looking to expand that to just basically any small business or nonprofit that wants to check it out. Um, and then anyone- check it out and take it with you or just- Yeah, yeah, uh, you check it out with your library. So come tax season, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have a scanner, my scanner broke. You can come in check out a scanner, do all your tax stuff and return it. Um, then the printer does come with ink already and you don't have to mess with the ink, it comes with ink. Um, and then we do have a projector and screen. So if you wanna check out projector and a screen, you're doing like an outside presentation somewhere, um, you can check that out with your library card. Or if you wanna do like an outdoor movie night for your Or if you, yeah, exactly. Um, yep. It's very cool. How big is it? Is it that? Uh, it's probably, <laughs> it might be a little smaller than that, but I think it's pretty big. I want to say it's. With the projector, you can put on like a blank yes. wall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes with a screen though. Yeah. But you could, if you wanted to make it bigger than the screen, yeah, you could put it wherever. Um. Okay, so if you need additional help, you can always call the reference desk um, and ask like, if you forget the name of a resource or you're like, uh, how do I you know, do this? They can kind of help you walk through some of the Kirkwood library resources. Um, people at the reference desk aren't gonna be able to help you with some of the other resources that we don't have here just because they're not trained in it. I've worked at all the other libraries in St. Louis, so I know how to use all of them. Um, so that's where you can email me if you were like, I wanna do demographics now um, and walk through those. You can set up an appointment with me at that link. Um, you can sign up for the email I send out monthly that kind of says what programs we have coming up. Um, in January, we aren't gonna have any small business programming in January, but come February, we're gonna have like the SBDC come out and do some more programming with us. Um, and I'll probably, um, I'm also looking at having an accountant come in and talk about tax, um, taxes, <laughs> uh, you know, things to look for, pitfalls, um, what, you know, what are common mistakes that people make when they're filing their business taxes and things like that. Um, I don't. Um, I actually Peg Weathers emailed me two names today, so I don't remember. I'd have to look. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I will take all the names because if everyone turns me down, then I will have backups. They should jump at the option. They should reach the people. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions about anything that I talked about? I know it's overwhelming because it's so much information. Anybody online, Sarah, Kristen? <laughs> okay, well, that is it. That That's it, that's everything. That's everything that's the library lot. has. <laughs> nope, it's not. <laughs> there's actually a lot more, but. Oh, there's the chat. Oh. It is being recorded. Yeah, so I will. Um, <laughs> yeah, all of your comments are on there and I'm going to put it on and I put it on YouTube so everyone can hear. Make sure to tag all of the social media. <laughs> but yes, I will send out the recording um, once I have it. And I'm actually, I'm going to stop the recording.